proving that the Guile theme does in fact go with everything. Uh, which is, there, there's a lot of YouTube out there. There's one with Lion King with uh, the Guile theme also worth checking out. Um, this is our third PAX panel for Overclock Remix, PAX Prime. Um, we are Overclock Remix, we remix video game music, and there is a picture of Larry and Jimmy and Uematsu raising their hands. Wait, it's supposed to be like after the battle. Da 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 uh, okay, well, uh, this is the boring part of our presentation, but uh, one, how many people were here last year? Yeah. Thank you for coming back. We'll try to do some different shit, so it's not uh, recap. Um, uh, OC Remix, how many people know what OC Remix or don't know what OC Remix is? All right, so this is oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay. Do you raise just, their hand? Do you know where you are right now? <laughs> um, okay, so this is this slide is for you. Overclock Remix is an online community dedicated to the recognition of video game music as an art form. We've got 2,200 free arrangements of video game music. Uh, some examples: Street Fighter II Jazz. So actually, we did just post like a jazz arrangement of Ken's theme, which is pretty good. Um, Zelda dubstep, Mega Man orchestral, you know, pretty much anything. Those are some mainstream examples. Um, we do interviews with remixers and video game composers. We did an interview with Nanny D, who is in the audience. Right there. Very Super right Meat Boy, stand up, Nanny D. Stand up, stand up. Um, the site also has a database just of general information about video game music. Uh, it's not by any means comprehensive, but we're trying to work on that, make it bigger. It does have a lot of information on like which composers scored which games, when the games came out, screenshots, that sort of stuff. And also the, the chiptune so you can hear the original soundtrack. If it's like a SNES, you can get the SPC, SNES, you can get the NSF, etc. And it's also uh, just a, a large community of really cool people, I hope, uh, I think. All right, so including the really cool people, wait, maybe we want to go down the line and yeah. introduce yeah. Who, who we are. Right. Start having Good call. Justin. Hi, my name is Justin Meshard. I go by Nutritious on the site. I'm a judge of Remixer. My name is Jimmy Hinson. Uh, you would know me on the site as Big Giant Circles. I am a former judge and I head up the, uh, the fundraiser month that they do every year. <laughs> And Mass Effect 2, Mass Effect 2. I did a little bit of work on Mass Effect 2. I'm Larry OG, I'm otherwise known as Lion Tamer. Uh, I'm the head judge of OC Remix, I'm also our community manager, so if you talk to us on Facebook or Twitter, that's probably me. And um, I love video game music and have no other talent. <laughs> David Lloyd, DJ Pretzel, uh, started the site. <laughs> I'm Steve Bortz, I'm known as Level99 on the site. I'm uh, site staff. I also host Overclocked After Dark, the official, unofficial podcast of OC Remix, where we play a lot of video game mixes and read a lot of horrible fan fiction. <laughs> What's the one with Robocop and Superman and Batman? And oh, 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 oh. Superman and Robocop, the day the men found love? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go into that. The worst one is the Inspector Gadget crossover with those two. It's, oh God. <laughs> it's not for children. Doomsday Womb is what it's called. <laughs> Doomsday Womb. <laughs> uh, again, for the two people that raise their hands, uh, HTTP, uh, OCRemix.org.com has been cyber squatted by people that want to sell you things. Um, and you know that random girl that's in all the generic cyber squatting shots. <laughs> oh, yeah. she's yeah. kind of cute, but uh, you know, she has nothing to do with OCRemix.org, unfortunately. Um, we, are, we have a Facebook page. Uh, we're almost up to twenty thousand, which mm -hmm. is, we're, we're is uh, about ninety away now, I think. Cool. Um, we have some stuff on Last FM, but not all of it because they were kind of douches and they got rid of their embeddable track player without telling anybody, and you know whatnot. Uh, Twitter, we have a Twitter thing that follow me on Twitter. Like for real, like we we, we like to pimp new remixes. Um, just try and keep people in touch with what other video game uh, music composers and other OC remixers are doing just around the web. So you know, follow it and get more news on that. Yeah, 
And also, every new mix that comes out is posted on YouTube, so you can listen to it there, sort of like as a preview before you download the higher quality MP3. And we also do like album trailers and things like that on YouTube as well. Okay. So, uh, how many people are interested in remixing or remix themselves? Okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Has anyone here ever submitted a song to OC Remix? There you go. Has anybody been rejected? Danny <laughs> <laughs> B's been rejected. Why is it for you? Why is it? Okay, well, Justin, um, you know, this is actually your first time on OC Remix panel, yeah. but you are a judge, one of our newest judges, so you're going to talk a little bit. Can you even see the slide? I can't really see the slide. Yeah, I'm just kind of we just paraphrase it. So what basically happens? <laughs> if someone submits their song to OCR. Okay, first of all, uh, yeah, you get your song together, your remix ready, and you uh, submit it to the slide. We've got some links that show you where to email it to and kind of, you know, your standard form. But... First thing that happens is it goes into kind of initial judgment. Uh, either Larry or one of the other judges will take a first look at it. If it's just blows us away, meets all our standards, everything, you know, which is kind of a small percentage of the mixes, but you know, it could get just directly posted to the site. Um, most of the mixes is what happens is it's, it's good, but you know, it needs some further evaluation by the judges panel at large. We'll uh, submit it to the panel, kind of everyone will Take a listen, see if it meets our standards in you know arranging the track and you know decent production quality. Yeah, give feedback. Get fee. We'll give good feedback and try and help if there's uh, weaknesses in the track, and then kind of vote yes or no. And so majority yes or no's uh, will determine if you get yes, you get on the site, you know, and then majority no's will kind of say that you know no, maybe resubmit, give you some tips on how to do that. And then if it's a little on the weaker side, I think it's kind of not very nice on that slide. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it could be direct rejected, but the form letters say, you know, we've, we've got some workshop forms on the site that kind of give a lot of, there's a, available for the community to kind of give a lot of feedback and help, you know, prospective remixers, and so that's a really good um, thing to use, and we've got some staff also working that form to use for those kind of mixes as well. I think it's worth uh, elaborating on a little bit, like when he, when he talks about if it meets our standards, um, it's not just whether or not we like it, there's actually reasons that we have standards. Uh, in the past, I mean, we've had people that literally take the original tune and they'll just throw a drum loop underneath it <laughs> and call it a remix. There's other people who will take an actual MIDI rip that someone has done from the game and then they'll just upgrade the instrumentation. That to us, it's not really a remix. It's, I mean, it's, you don't want to rip off the original composer. You, you kind of want to make it your own and, and in that way you're paying true homage. It's, it's not just about when we say, well, our standards, it's not whether or not we like it. We just want it to, to meet a, you know, a certain criteria so that it's not like a legal issue for us so we're directly ripping someone off. And we also don't want somebody to like, you know, send us a Justin Bieber remix that happens to have like the Zelda theme in it for five seconds. And, you know, so like, <laughs> and, and I mean, it's, I mean, you know, when we reject mixes, we're, we try and be clear, you know, we're not rejecting it because it's bad music. I mean, we enjoy a lot of the songs that we reject and we like to say that, you know, it's not bad music. It's just we kind of have specific things we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Right. Although, I mean, some of it actually is bad. Music. Some bad. Of it. <laughs> I mean, it does happen. My yeah, favorite yeah. example of that is like the, one of the mixes yeah. that's like the, the, the scenario three down there, it needs serious improvement, was pretty much a verbatim uh, version of the Chocobo theme panned all the way left, like on, on, only in one headphone if you were listening, and then the exact same theme panned all the way right delayed by two seconds. Uh, <laughs> and you might think that oh, sounds that's good, close but to it sound just good. doesn't. <laughs> Said Uematsu did not write that piece to be a round. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. So um, you know, don't let any of this stuff scare you if you're interested in, in doing stuff. Uh, people start off uh, sometimes and send stuff in that, that doesn't sound that great, but they get better over time. One really fantastic example of that. He's not here on the panel, but uh, Andrew versus Zircon. Like his initial stuff, it was solid, it was good, but he has gotten so much better mm -hmm. in, in the years. Yeah, a, a lot of people who have gone on to do really awesome music have submitted stuff to us, you know, early on when they were learning and gotten rejected. I mean, as long as you're not too butt hurt, like, <laughs> don't be too butt hurt, stick with it, and you'll get better, and you know, you'll, you'll get miles better, so. Okay, I was don't initially rejected. Okay. Same. Same. I think <laughs> most of us were. Yeah. <laughs> I was rejected for five years. Yeah. Oh. They finally let me on. <laughs> Your mistake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, Jimmy, Damn. Jimmy, you started April as support of OCR month. So. Uh, oh right, right. Okay. So um, I don't, a lot of people, I think, uh, are under the assumption that OCR is like this big thing on the internet, and uh, and that we have tons of money, and we probably have sponsors and whatnot. That is actually not the case. Um, we do get a pretty substantial amount of traffic. Uh, so the site operating costs are, are a little bit higher than people would probably expect. 
Uh, I mean, we have uh, we have uh, utilities in place, like you know, we, we use Google Ads and stuff. But uh, you know, the, the most common people don't click those because you know, I mean, how many people actually click Google Ads on a site? Who doesn't have ad block now? I love well, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wait, I who click Google Ads all the time? Yeah, who doesn't have an ad blocker like on there? You know, <laughs> <laughs> like ten people. All right. Okay. Yeah. Give so, so time. the point is, you know, I mean, Google uh, Ads are okay. I mean, they do bring in some money, but they don't exactly cover the cost, and they've kind of. At one point, um, a few years ago, they were really, really dwindling uh, to the point where, I mean, none of us actually get paid to do this. This is a volunteer basis thing. That's another thing a lot of people think that, that, that this Wait, is like. Wait, you don't get paid? Sorry, man. No. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> you got free admission packs? Not with money, anyway. Okay. Uh, hey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so anyway, so the uh, the site uh, one year, Dave. Uh, we were we were talking in IRC, and uh, and uh, Dave came in and, and was just sort of like you could tell he was a little bit stressed about like man, this you know we've got so many expenses right now, and, and Google Ads aren't going to cover it. And as much work as we put into the site, I mean, I think any of us would be willing to donate money to the site, and, and actually many of us have um, before, but uh, you know, it's kind of like, it's, it's one thing to dedicate all your time to it and then still feel like you know, what, you're, what you're working on isn't gonna be, be sustainable. Uh, so the next day or something, uh, I think it was about the next day, it was right at the beginning of April, I just kind of spontaneously started this unofficial uh, campaign where uh, we, we have various like monthly themes on the forums. That, you know, they'll say like June is Boss Month, and everybody puts like a signature in their forum profile with a boss on it or something. So April became unofficially the Support Overclock Remix Month, and I basically just harassed people like, you know, hey, look, you know, here's some stats about the site. We've got tons of visitors. You know, here are the facts, like how many you know people are visiting the site. You know, if anybody could just con you know contribute a dollar or something like that, it would really help share the load and and uh, ensure the site's uh, continuity. So. Um, it was a huge success. The first year we did it, we brought in um, what, 2, like, like two thousand or twenty five hundred bucks or something, um, which is not actually enough to keep the site sustainable for a year. But that you know, combined with uh, with other people's donations, uh, plus like merch sales and, and stuff, it was a huge success. So we've kind of been doing it every year since. This last year was simply phenomenal. Uh, we raised over seven thousand dollars for the site. Um, so. I don't if any of if any of you contribute to that, I mean we definitely are right. like good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, and, and that's I mean that's kind of the point. My big goal is that uh, and it was it was really I think part of the reason that uh, this last year was a, was a, such a big success is that um, in the past we've had like a few people who donate large sums of money. I mean we'd have people that would donate up to five hundred dollars. And that's awesome, and they deserve all the credit that, that they deserve. But at the same time, I feel I don't feel like it's really fair that they should have to pay five hundred dollars when there's like literally you know hundreds of thousands of people that are hitting up our site. So my, my philosophy is always you know uh, you know many hands make you know kind of help share the load, uh, make a lighter load. So you know if if you appreciate what we do, um, then feel free to you know help us out in any way. Um, just remember, it's not like going to buy Dave a new boat or anything like that. <laughs> you have a boat. <laughs> buy him a boat. Period. Uh, yeah, that's the case. But uh, but but it does help us out, and and our goal is just to spread video game music awareness um, and help people appreciate it um, for what it is and. Just being able to uh, keep the site up is, is obviously the most important thing. We don't. We also don't want to just meet our goal. We want to exceed it. The reason being, like, we have albums up here. These albums cost money to make. Uh, they're not free um, to produce, so it, it helps us to have the extra money to do that. So uh, anyway, that's pretty much the size of it. We're pretty much going to do it every year. Yeah. Um, so you know, if, if the music that you've listened to uh, means anything to you, just consider you know making a donation. It doesn't have to be a hundred bucks. I mean, if it's a dollar, that's cool. If it's five dollars, ten dollars, whatever. I mean, we're very appreciative. So. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for your continued support. Yeah. I feel like I'm doing like a PBS. <laughs> Jimmy, we have yeah, operators standing by. Justin's uh, here Jimmy, to take the call. Jimmy, okay. here's two dollars. Now shut up. <laughs> it goes today, man. It's going on. I'll take it though. If you for the boat. Um, for the boat. On the same token, the uh, Jimmy, I believe you also started this December is Reviews Month. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, what it is is that in in uh, December we try and give the um, the people who make the music a little bit more recognition, we encourage people to go onto the forums or on YouTube and leave feedback for uh, lesser fee uh, mixes that have lesser reviews. Because there's a lot of hidden gems out there that only have two, three, four reviews. And as artists, 
it really helps us both improve our work and it makes us feel good for doing what we do because like uh, Jimmy said, we don't get paid for this. Everybody who submits to the site spends a lot of time and a lot of energy and pours a lot of heart into their songs and they don't get anything out of it except for the knowledge that people are out there reviewing, the, uh, listening and enjoying their stuff and hopefully reviewing it to let them know. So we try to encourage people during December to give as many reviews to as many songs as possible. I think last year we had like some 700, 750 new uh, posts for mixes and that vastly increased how many people were uh, submitting again after a long time just not having a lot of feedback on their mix. Yeah, mix. Right. I need water. <laughs> it's hot up here. I mean, all, all, of the, all of the Chrono Trigger mixes tend to get like tons of reviews. Anything with vocals, people like either love it or hate it, and the people that hate it chime in, and then the people who love it chime in to defend it. Um, but like, if you just like mix a game like, has anyone played El Viento on the Sega Genesis? <laughs> Oh, damn. No one. No one. All, right. All you need to know is that reviews make Nobuo happy. I mean, if you look up there, he's smiling. He's giving you a thumbs up. Go on the site and review. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is a photo that we actually took at Distant Worlds this year uh, with Uematsu and Hiro. No, no, Hiro was not there. This was Arnie Ralph. Right. Arnie Ralph, right. Yep. Um, what's good? What's going, hey, what's going on? What did you, what's going on? What did you do to the site? <laughs> what the? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Jazz hands! <laughs> um, so yeah, we mentioned that we do the, the interviews, and we did an interview with uh, with Danny B, where he talked about like uh, when my hair. <laughs> I, I, ever since this photo, I always expect you to have that cigar, and you never do, and it's always so. I actually don't even smoke cigars. I was just. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, uh, we interviewed um, Tim Wright, who did the Wipeout games. Lemmings. Yeah, yeah Lemmings. Uh, Grant Kirko. Um, Banjo Kazooie, Goldeneye 007. Dave yeah. Wise, Donkey Kong Country. Country. Yeah. Um, Alex Brandon. Yeah, Alex Brandon from Dave Sex on the tournament. We actually have some unpublished interviews. We talk, uh, spoke with Hiroki Kakuda last year at Otakon, which was really cool because one of the quote unquote best uh, mixes on the site is a uh, remix of Secret of Mana called Dragon Song. If you have not heard it, it is absolutely awesome. If you like it, okay, make some noise. If you've heard it and you like it, like that. <laughs> and uh, what was really cool was during this interview, uh, Kakuda actually specifically talked about that mix. And he even talked about like the guitar riff, and he air guitared, and we have it <laughs> on tape. On tape. Um, so that was cool. And he also just talked about how he uh, liked the idea that we um, arrange the pieces more and, and do the interpretive thing as opposed to just like the sound upgrades. So that was, that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there, even if you don't like video game remixes, uh, if you just want to read some composer interviews, we've got them. Mm -hmm. Oh, is, is it my, do I have to talk about this now? Yeah. Anybody here ever played Nights into Dreams? <laughs> One of OC Remix's mission statement is to further uh, video game music as an art form, and that includes lesser known mixes from lesser known games. There are a lot of games out there that have phenomenal soundtracks that are not well represented in the remix community. Nights into Dreams is a game that is <laughs> just a phenomenal soundtrack. And it's one of my favorites. And it, there's only, I think, two or three mixes on the site after 10 years. So uh, in summer of 2009, I started the Night's Lucid Dreaming Project. And the goal for me was, at the beginning, just to get as many varied styles and genres as possible to, yeah, you can see right there, right before 2011, like nothing. And now there's like 11 mixes on the site. Yeah. Nice. Um, as many different styles and genres as possible, giving that feeling of going through a lucid dream, just flying through different dreamscapes. So there's, I think, 45 different people that contributed music and six people that did artwork for each and every song on the album. So um, I think we're going to play the trailer for it, right? Yep. Uh, all right, OK. Even if you have not heard of Nights, are y'all ready for this trailer? Like, make some goddamn noise for it. <laughs> Purple pants, this is your trailer.
how, how do people how do people get that? that we have oh, limited uh, promo copies of that album. Yeah, how there's only it? 60 left. Uh, we're actually going to be selling stuff in a little while. And if you buy a hoodie or two T-shirts, you can get your choice of album. Uh, either Sonic: The Sound of Speed, Night's Lucid Dreaming, or Donkey Kong Country 2: Serious Monkey Business. Uh, if you just buy one shirt, you get you get Sonic. Sonic. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's a yeah. one disc album, that's why. That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not because we hate Sonic. Um, <laughs> so, uh, au contraire. But anyway, just about nights. Um, one question we often get at the end of uh, our panels when we do Q&A is like, how does someone start an album? Or how do you decide which games to do albums for? Because obviously you've got Donkey Kong Country 2, pretty big game, um, Sonic the Hedgehog, but then you have, there's a nice album. And you know, we, we try to do some more obscure stuff from time to time, but it's really like, uh, the staff doesn't decide which albums we right. do. It comes from the community. Right. Basically, what you have to do is you have to start from the ground up. You have to send out invitations and see if anybody's interested in doing it. You know, outline a scope. You know, it can't just be a compilation because those, as good as they may be, it really it doesn't work as an album. Uh, we try to focus on something that has a little bit more of uh, like a specialization. Like uh, for Sonic, there's uh, three different arrangements of the special stage, and they try to work that motif into different songs. For Lucid Dreaming, I actually wanted the motif, the, the nice motif, uh, in almost every song is in 90% of the music on there. And there's art to go with it. The upcoming Kirby Superstar album has an interactive art book that's going to go with it. Um, you see what people want to join in, you start gathering works in progress, and you know, as a director, you're in charge of getting everybody to do stuff. OCR staff, unless they're the ones starting the project, they have nothing to do with it until you're ready to submit it for evaluation. Um, so you go on the forums see what interest there is, and if people aren't there, you know, just do it yourself. Do the whole thing yourself. <laughs> That's one way to do it. I mean, it's also worth noting that sometimes, um, you know, we post mixes from albums that aren't necessarily official Uber Clock remix albums. Um, one great example of that was the Earthbound Bound Together project, which is absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah. And we should check it out. Um, but it was just the 25th anniversary of Metroid, and Harmony of a Hunter is not technically an Uber remix album. Uh, but it has a lot of OC remixers on it, and it has a lot of great Metroid. It's from all the different Metroid games, so it's actually got some Metroid Prime 3, um, the original Metroid, all the, Metroid. Ma all the major ones, yeah. Uh, definitely worth checking out. So we try to promote even albums that aren't necessarily like OCR official. Um, so, yeah, check out the album. Definitely check them all out. Speaking of albums. Oh, yeah. Ex uh, oh, yeah, we already did that. <laughs> Exclusive for PAX Prime yes. 2011. Our next album is going to be Mega Man 9, Back in Blue. Woo! Three years ago. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I think we may have. Yeah. Wow. People were excited about it back. Mega Man 9 had like just come out, or yeah, yeah. Mega Man um, 10 already. Yeah, yeah no. Um, but but you know, sometimes these albums hit some road bombs. This one just finished up, and actually it will be released this September, probably in the next two weeks, two three weeks. Uh, again, uh, in case we didn't already say this, all the albums are free, so it will be free. Um, online, and actually we've got exclusive debut at PAX 2011, very few people have seen this, the official trailer. Alright, wait a minute, but does anybody want to see the trailer? No. Or, you know, yeah! yeah. <laughs>
Brothers are done by Jose the Bronx Rico, who does amazing work. So oh, unfortunately wow. couldn't be here this time, but in his absence, just give him a big round of applause. For him. Yeah. Clarification there, he had nothing to do with the fried chicken guy all theme. Which is probably true his credit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wait now, I don't know where the slide is. Yeah, just keep going. We're yeah, we're good. Yep. We know what we're doing. We have do. a PowerPoint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just talk about uh, briefly OCR albums of 2011. Um, we already showed you nights. There was a really, really awesome album called Heroes vs. Villains that was a collaboration between Overclock Remix and The Bad Dudes, which was sort of like a collective of uh, mixers, some, some one-ups, some... Yeah, led by Mustin Dan Cannon is yeah. here. Yeah. There we go. Nice. Um, it was a concept album where the Overclock Remix quote-unquote artists were doing the hero themes and the Bad Dudes were doing the villain themes. I think we had some crossover just because, like, you know, Mustin was a hero and a villain, I think. Musta was just a hero. Yeah, he was a hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. Um, but a lot of great there's a lot of great themes on there. Kirby, Street Fighter Two, uh, Castlevania. Yeah. yeah. Secret Monkey Island actually is, if you were a fan of that soundtrack, and you should be, um, yeah. it has amazing mixes. The uh, the, the remix of LeChuck's theme has a, a live trombone solo that is, you know, the album's Woo! worth it for that track alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Pokemon, the Masingo tracks. Uh, I know you like Pokemans, alright. <laughs> Four and a half years to make. Yes, so, your mileage may vary on Pokemon, but, but I would snag it. <laughs> yep. Good stuff. Um, a, a lot of British artists, actually. Uh, there's Protodome's all over that, and Will Rock's all yeah. over that. So it's sort of a it's sort of a UK-led album, for whatever Woo! reason. Um, there you go. Uh, Mega Man, the Robot Museum is sort of like a one-man uh, army. Joshua Morse, he does his jazz fusion thing. Um, it's a fantastic album. You know, it doesn't have a lot of different genres on it. It is just really like jazz, funk, fusion, but he does that very, very well. He did a previous album like a couple years ago on Castlevania along the same lines. Uh, Son of the Dam, yeah. which, is, which is very good as well. Yeah. Uh, but the Robot Museum, you should definitely check that out. Sonic the Hedgehog, The Sound of Speed, uh, the original Sonic 1 soundtrack uh, in mostly electronica, but you know, a, a good variety. Like the harmony and drum also in the mix. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The, with the vibe solo. Yes. Yeah. Vibe um, solo. Good stuff. And uh, you know the year is not over yet, but that's what that's five albums, and Mega Man Nine should be out sometime next month. So in terms of albums, we're releasing more this year than any year past. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Okay. Um, real quickly, the boring stuff. <laughs> I think we had like a version of this slide at the last two packs, and some of this stuff still isn't implemented. So. What? It's all your fault. <laughs> this is oh. the like we keep promising things that we don't deliver. <laughs> um, uh, upcoming site changes, we will be adding blogs. The good thing about that is whenever you start a favorites thread on our forums, we will quash it. The moderators will sort of delete it just because if we let everyone do them, there'd be a, a zillion that would glut the forums. But once we have the blogs, people can do like top 10, you know, Mega Man mixes and to their heart's content. Um, VV4, Vivalton 4, supporting YouTube embeds and other types of embeds. Um, the coolest, the single coolest thing is going to be the Play Original feature, which right now, if you go to the site, which I will do, since for once I have a working internet connection. Um, so for any given mix, well, this is a really old nice mix, but you can always click Play Preview, and uh, internet's a little slow here. That's okay. you, but YouTube will eventually show up and give you the preview of the mix, which is pretty cool. This is an old one by, I think this was actually the first nice mix on the site back in 2001, by Big Pop. Um, yeah. It was pretty amazing. But the next version of the site, right next to the Play Preview, it's actually Play Preview is going to turn into Play Remix, and beneath it is going to be Play Original. So that you can compare the remix with the original if you're not familiar with it, if you just want to hear what they changed, if they changed the key, if they changed the tempo, things like that. Um, so that's that's the single feature that's like I've been waiting to do for so long. We actually, you know went through YouTube and found good videos for all of these original sources, because YouTube is a really good source for this stuff, added it into our database, and then cross-referenced it with the mixes so that we can do that. Even mixes that are like mixes of multiple themes, you'll be able to play all of them on the same page, like back to back, and then listen to the mix and see how it incorporates those themes. This is a long time coming. This will come out this year, uh, come hell or high water. Uh, <laughs> we will not be here next year saying, like, ah, this is play original. Say that now, Dave. Yeah. Okay. You said that uh, last year, too. Yeah, and the year before that. <laughs> <laughs> this is the year, man. I, <laughs> year. Right. I was lying those other two times. Okay. All right, from current slide. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, yeah, 2011. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> it was a fun. I love this book. Ah, oh, my son. <laughs> <laughs> Judges, healthy and nutritious. Uh, just yeah. we added a, 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 a couple judges to the roster. Uh, Larry and Paige are engaged. Yeah. I tied her down, damn it! <laughs> Where did you get that? Oh, you can tell he's so thrilled about it. Yeah. <laughs> he's so happy. <laughs> Only been dating for seven years. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's good. Uh, Stephen and Val uh, got engaged. So that's pretty cool. Yay. Yay. I bought a bigger house. I don't know. You don't well, have the house is a castle. It's a castle, and I moved my friends to another castle. I got married last year, so we couldn't put this up on that box. Uh, and then a lot of more people. Justin had another kid. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, it's up to three dude. now. All right, man. Congrats to Justin for pumping out these kids, baby. <laughs> Now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, one thing. Like, um, we were going to sell shirts. If you buy a shirt, it is fifteen dollars. You get Sonic the Hedgehog album. If you buy two shirts or a hoodie using your credit card, uh, you get your pick of any of the albums, including Nice and Donkey Kong Country Two. How much is a hoodie? Uh, a hoodie is twenty-five dollars. Okay. And okay. two shirts would be thirty because they're right. fifteen. We don't have hoodies here, so we can only take orders for them via credit card. And uh, so. Square. Hopefully, like people will line up, um, but we can't. The line can't go past those stairs. Or that Our that, stores, rather. that enforcer is the cut off. Yeah, he'll, he'll cut you off. So, so if you'd like, uh, like to line up now to, to buy our wonderful things, we will sell them to you. Okay, be wonderful. But the panel is not over. It will continue even as people buy things. <laughs> Just to clarify. Don't go anywhere. Yes. We still have stuff to show you. Oh yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know when that damn Kirby project is coming out. Just to clarify for the line, like we have an enforcer who is the end of the line. He will if enforce. you see him holding up a sign that says the line is closed, please sit down and wait. He will hold up a sign when the line is back open and there is no room. So anyone standing behind Blinky, Blinky wave. Blinky wave, there we go. Anybody standing Blinky. behind Blinky gets to go back and sit down. Sorry. <laughs> but you'll get a chance, yeah. Justin. You'll get a chance. And, and you'll be able to watch what's coming next. Um, which we've never done before. This is a PAX 2011 exclusive uh, debut. Oh, no, it's not. This is a slide that we've, we've done several other times, actually. But there's something. Uh, just get this slide. How much time do we have? 20 minutes. Okay, I'll do this slide really quick because it's actually really cool. Overclock Remix in the video game industry. A lot of people that got their start in Overclock Remix are now breaking into the video game music industry. Uh, Jillian Aversa, Pixie Tricks, uh, has the vocals in God of War, goes to Sparta. Also, Halo Reach, I think? Um, she's a telling for Halo? I don't know, were you supposed to say that? <laughs> oh, oops. Uh, <laughs> some Halo-related game. Um, uh, Andy worked on Monkey Island 2, Abadas worked on Trenches, which uh, just hit 2 million copies sold. Yeah, wow. Prophetic, Fred, has done a lot of games for iOS. Danny B has done Super Meat Boy, Cannibal, and The Binding of Isaac coming soon. And Cave Story 3DS. And Cave Story 3, yes, yeah, that's pretty cool. Use your password. It's 8889. <laughs> um, so, yeah, actually, maybe someone's heard about the Bethesda lawsuit between the Elder Scrolls and Scrolls. Um, I don't know how that's going to be resolved. I would have loved the Quake match. I know, man. I, I still hope that happens, but. Whether it's called Scrolls or um, something else, uh, Josh yeah. Wilchell and Matthias Gert, uh, also known as another soundscape, yeah. those of you judge, they're going to be doing the soundtrack, so hopefully that'll blow up huge like Minecraft did, and we'll be big and famous and have all of the like, Super Meat Boy money that Danny has. has. Um, <laughs> Busta Tunes, Force Unleashed 2, actually uh, Old Republic coming soon. I think he has some stuff on that as well. Uh, Kate Triton, Missile Master, iOS game again. Uh, Anso is actually on here twice, I don't know why, but Anso, another sounds kid, Matthias Gert, did the music for Cobalt, which was a finalist in the IGF Awards, and actually just got picked up by um, the Minecraft company, the name is... Mojang! Mojang! Okay, you thank you. can play it too, it's here, at the Minecraft booth. Oh yeah? Yeah. Oh cool. Awesome. He, he is actually um, co-composing the game that may or may not be called Scrolls with Josh Welch. Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, but he did all of the music for Cobalt. He didn't do the sound effects, um, which are also really amazing. Very cool game. Actually, Larry and I were IGF audio judges, the Independent Games Festival judges, 
And the audio award ended up going to Amnesia, which is an amazing game. But Cobalt was in the running, uh, Retro City Rampage Bastion, was in the running, Bastion, Bastion was in the running, which was awesome. Um, so that was, that was actually a fun experience. Jimmy, we already mentioned Mass Effect 2, and then a couple of different people, Zircon, Jill, SGX, contributed to Pump It Up Pro 2. Which doesn't really have the same impact as some of the other things on the list, but if you like to pump it up and you're a pro, there you go. Uh, maybe that's your thing. Kind of along the same lines, I know it's not on the slide, but uh, one really cool thing, we actually have a lot of people who were in the VG industry first who are yeah. now on a Move Overclock remix. Uh, we got Alexander Brandon uh, yeah, did a remix uh, with me for the site. Uh, we've got uh, Grant Kurt Pope, uh, Robin Beanland uh, both contributed some stuff. Uh, Jeremy Soule a long time ago, he was like, was he the original, like, Big guy that uh, oh, yeah, was Batman, the Batman. Deuce oh, the Batman. I'm sorry, Deuce no, the Batman. Deuce George Deuce uh, Sanger, the Batman, <laughs> did, uh, did some remixes, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, we've Batman. also got a lot of guys. Um, it may or may not be considered the pro industry, but you know, there's a lot of uh, well-known uh, video game bands. You got the Mini Bosses. Uh, you got the Woo! Megas. You got Select Start. Um, I mean, you know, you can say they're pro because you know they, they perform uh, and whatnot, kind of kind of for a living. Um, Stemage. Uh, Stimmage, yeah, Stimmage. Uh, Vert, uh, Jay Kaufman, you guys know who is. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, she does. Right. For sure. If you don't, you should. And actually, Jake sent us a mix. Uh, I think it was last year for Shantai. Shantai? Yes. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't pronounce. Shantai. Okay, fine. Um, it's an awesome mix, actually. This is the Deus Ex mix that uh, Alexander Brandon, original composer of Deus Ex, and also like Unreal Tournament and other stuff, did with Jimmy. And then, real quick. I can't spell. Oh, you're going to play? Oh, internet failed. Internet. Internet. There it is. Um, it's really cool. Like, Jake did a, a, like a Bollywood-style mix uh, of this game that he did the music for. So here we have a composer remixing his own music, <laughs> which is pretty awesome. It's, it's remix of Jake Kaufman, composer Jake Kaufman. And I highly recommend this mix. Um, so that was cool. Do you guys follow like the mini bosses, the no. megas, the uh, select star? You guys know who they are. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know who they are? Is what I'm asking. Worth noting, uh, also who works with me on Mass Effect 2, we've got Brian DiDomenico, who's a super rad guy. He, uh, he's also a production manager for the video games live concert. If you've ever caught that, but it's awesome. If you haven't caught it, it's super cool. Uh, he's actually also the keyboardist for the Megas. Uh, they're playing today at 5 in uh, the Jam Space. That's worth checking out. But they have some remixes on the site, too, with Pro worth checking out. So. Um, so yeah, I mean that's, that's the one nice thing about the last couple of years is that some of the people that are off doing their own thing, doing more performance-oriented um, bands, showing up at PAX and other conventions, uh, have also sent in a couple tracks just so that they have something on like Nosy Remix that we can pimp them with. Um, also, I, I realize now that we don't, I think, have a slide on this, but if you've never been to something called MAGFest, uh, yeah, there you go, he has. How many people have been to MAGFest? Yes. Raise your hand. Okay, yeah, well, well... Well, the rest of you need to go. Well, it's okay, it is sort of an East Coast thing, um, but if you ever are out by the East Coast, it's, it's in and around the D.C. area now. It used to be back in South Virginia, but now it's National Harbor, Maryland, actually, which is right up close to next to D.C. If you can make it, it is sort of like the mecca of the video game music arrangement, remix, cover scene. Um, tons of bands play there. We're always there. It's in my, like, backyard, and... If you can make it to MAGFest, bottom line is you'd be a fool not to go. Um, so yeah, all of that is all of that is true. Um, so yeah, this is this is that other thing I mentioned, you know, two slides ago. Uh, so we've got a new contest. We usually do like name that tune, video game music trivia, that sort of thing, and it's fun. Uh, a couple times we played bootleg Street Fighter Two runs, always fun as well. Um, so this time we we got something a little a little different. Um, there's a point here, and that, that is that sometimes bad games, really bad games, can have good music. So, so Silver Surfer. Uh, yeah, I mean, not an awful game. Not as bad as, for example, Cheetah Men 2. So, this is one of the worst games I've ever played. Um, there's virtually no hit detection, the controls are absolutely awful. You can't duck, and yet there are enemies that are lower than you are that you can't shoot either, so you just have to avoid them. <laughs> you can't shoot backwards without facing backwards, which looks really awkward. Um, it's nearly impossible to play. I mean, I think there are like two people in the world that can actually beat it, or I don't, I'm not even sure it's beatable, but can do well. Um, enemies spawn like right out in front of you, uh, at random sometimes it seems. 
sometimes you explode for seemingly no reason. We actually figured this out. Um, if you jump from like uh, half screen or more, you actually die. It just doesn't. You don't like fall to your death. You just explode. Um, and yet, and yet, it has really good music. Um, and so Kotaku did a piece on this, like. Worst NES game ever has best soundtrack ever. I don't know if it's the best soundtrack ever, but it is good. And a lot of people picked up on this news, and a lot of Japanese remixers, they've sort of got their own scene, they, they do their own thing, there's no like one site to, to rule them all or whatnot. But a lot of Japanese mixers got into remixing Cheetah Man 2 theme. Unfortunately, we, don't, we have no idea who the composer is. I don't think anyone who had anything to do with this game wants their name attached to it. Like, Did you work on Cheetah Man 2? Nah, no, no. Um, there's actually one copy of Cheetah Man 2 on Amazon.com right now going for $2,600. Um, so if you've got the money, uh, I highly don't recommend it. <laughs> anyway, we've got two remixes of Cheetah Man 2 on the site. Um, you will hear the original soundtrack as we are going to play the game. But first, I wanted to play for you a couple of the remixes that we have of Cheetah Man 2. The first is by Prototype Raptor. It is called Cheetah. And so you'll see what we mean. It's actually got really good music. It actually has a lot of original passages. Passages, I think, like the it's like 20 or 30 seconds long, which back in those days was a lot of different pieces for uh, you know, an original to have. So, in honor of Cheetah Man 2 and all of the bad games out there that have good music, and all the game composers that probably have their uh, their music attached to games that they maybe are not proud of, we're going to have what we believe to be is the first Cheetah Man 2 competition. Now, this has never been done before, um, Larry. What? Would you like to assist with the Cheetah Man 2 competition? I can't for the moment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's much better at this than I am. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> So the way we're going to do this is... Oh, man, there was a microphone on the podium yeah, yesterday. Go, all right, anyway. Uh, oh, no, that's all right. Okay, so... You don't need a mic. <laughs> this is not... <laughs> All right, all right, so we're going to get one representative from each side. You're going to represent your side. We need somebody that thinks they're the most badass video game player in the world and can rock up Cheetah Men. So I need one person from each side, and if you're crazy, I'll pick you. So, like, be, be with it. Like, I need somebody to hand a shoot up. There's at least three. Oh, don't worry. I haven't got to So what they're going to compete for, because we want to hook all y'all up, is that 
Whoever wins for their side, I'm gonna, they're going to get our Sonic album, but I'm also going to give them four more Sonic albums to randomly give out to somebody that they want to give it out to in their side. So I need them to motivate them to do it. All right, so what, what side are we calling? All right. Okay, so you're the um, okay, you're the cheetah side. Okay. What's your name? Emily. Okay, Emily. Give it up for Emily on the cheetah side. Okay, and, and for the men's side, I guess. All right. Burn. All right. What's your name, my man? Neil. Neil for the men's side. All right, so uh, Dave, you're gonna set them up. We're gonna get a plan. I'm now going to load this completely legal cheat of into Ron. Because I own the game. I bought that. I'm the person selling it on Amazon for $20. That was, that was me. Um, so uh, the start button is here, and one button shoots, and the other button jumps. Maybe. If you're lucky. So I guess cheat aside goes first. Oh, yeah. Yes! Oh, yeah. Oh, the goalie. Dr. Morbius! We're gonna go with, uh, with the full screen. You can watch the flop. Ruining his Wait, wait. 
choice on who she wants to give the four extra Sonic albums to. And so, you know, grovel, beg, plead, don't steal. I'm going to kick your ass. I'm going to you up, though. But give it up one more time, Emily. Let's see you. Oh, you got oh, packed yeah. metal. Well, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Great job. Thank you guys again very much.